<laughs> What's up, guys? Just uh, got back home, getting some stuff. Just picked up a, a box, went and got my new non recalled jack stands from Harbor Freights. These are my six tons. I um, I need to bring back two three tons as well, but I'll get around to those later. I don't use the three tons for much. I, I have two aluminums that I bring to the track with me, and I got crap. I think they're over here. They got, they're sitting another 8.8 eight on. <laughs> no, I don't really care about the warranty or recall on those because they don't really hold up a car. I don't like that they made these red now. Kind of freaking ugly. Still heavier shit, too. Mess going over here. Holy crap. Oh, this place is a wreck. Mess. I've been working and not cleaning. And it's, it's freaking showing. <laughs> I got the downpipe. I'll show you. I got the downpipe finished up. Well, mostly finished up. The only thing I had to do is make a mount. I had to run out to the store and find some aluminum rod, tube, whatever the hell I can find aluminum that's round so I can make a hanger. It's pretty simple with this. I walked right out with my two old ones, grabbed two new ones, and they scanned it, and I signed a receipt and walked right out. I'm, I'm starting to get a little aggravated because this is taking so ungodly long, and it's June, and the car's not done, and I'm slacking and being lazy and whatever the hell else I'm doing, building decks, and yeah, I don't know. So, I wrote a list last night. I think this is everything that I need to do. Look how long that goddamn list is. And what kills me is it's not a lot of big stuff. It's all little crap that I just need to do. And most of this stuff is, you know, 85, 75, 80% done. I just needed to finish it. Ground the engine. Ran the cable from the battery to the firewall, the firewall connector. I gotta make engine side grounds. I didn't have any, I ran out of fucking fittings. So I went and picked those up today so we can finish that. Yes, everything's still a mess here. Big freaking mess. Oh, well, what I'm gonna do is, I already told my wife that I'm working on this car every single day for the next week. I don't care. I need to get as much possibly done as I can. I need to get going. Drag week's going to be here before I know it. And I still have a lot of stuff to do besides, besides just racing. I still need to get my cage certified. I need to get a competition license. There's a whole bunch of crap to do. So we're going to start doing odds and ends and finishing up those odds and ends today. I have... I gotta finish making my grounds. Oh, uh, there's there's a um, there's a junction fitting thing on the firewall that goes to the battery that I ran. So I gotta make a ground from there to the block, and then from the block to the chassis. Not hard, easy work. I just gotta figure out where on the chassis and then I ran out of good heat shrink on top of it. it kind of aggravates me a little bit but good uh yeah so we're gonna use this other stuff I have which isn't um glued on the inside It still works. My handy dandy crimper works great. I 
should put this thing in my goddamn vise. That would really make it simple, huh? <clears throat> the downpipe I'm really excited about because I got it to look really nice. Everything's in my freaking way today. Doesn't help that my kid leaves literally everything everywhere on this floor. Get this up on the stud, length, cut. That's why I order like 30, 40, 50 feet of this so I have enough extra. <laughs> Let me uh, show you the uh, ground system. System, but it's hard to see. You can see them bolted to the block right there. You can see they run up the travel limiter. One goes to the travel limiter right here, which is welded to, sorry about the light, uh, welded to the frame. I just ground the paint off and bolted it, and that one goes straight to the battery right there. I think i got to loosen this, and might not be enough slack in that. There's my downpipe I was telling you about. The mini bullhorn sticking out, looks good. I had this trim ring I had made for another car. Pretty slick. I just had to modify it a little bit. And I gotta make a hanger so this doesn't move around. <laughs> but it's V-banded right there. So if I wanna take the bumper off, cause bumper's quick connected on each side with Zeus fasteners. These are the wrong size. They're a little too short and tight. <laughs> you know, I just come in here whip my this bolt off and this is a quick release one okay with a little flipper just flip it off take the tip off move the bumper bing bang boom good to go i just gotta make a hanger for it off of this well crossed off the grounds yes now we are also in the middle of the parachute cable so if you remember, I was using, I had a regular parachute handle in there before, but now I've upgraded to a CO2 system, <clears throat> CO2 release from Motion Raceworks, and it comes with a new cable, which, you know, is a lot longer than what's, what a Fox body is needed. I have the cable ran, it's all bolted up on the bracket, on the handle. It's run through the trunk off the side where I think it'll be fine and all right. No issues. I, you know, I could just put a uh, a gym jammy over there. I actually might loosen this up just a touch and give it like a half a, like an inch of slack into the cab. Because I don't think that battery's going to stick out as far as this one is. I'd like to be able to just make a tab for it. There, that seems like it would be about right. You know, get this thing run all the way before you go to cut this because there ain't no adding it back on once you cut it. I have the Motion Raceworks cable holder bolted to the side of the shoe mount. It's actually a really nice piece. It's designed for their shoot mounts. This is a TMZ shoot mount, but I just bent the, uh, the, the metal a little bit to get it to the backside. No big deal, works perfect. So we gotta cut this because it's not gonna be all the way out and around. So we got to put our parachute back in. All right, let's put, let's put the chute in. I'm gonna go find it. Ta-da! <laughs> Here's a piece of advice that I just, I, I did it myself again. I always try to put the pin, this pull pin, opposite of your cable. So when you go to pull the pin out, you actually ac accidentally don't pull the cable with it. So put it in from the other side. So you want the, obviously the cable to be out, however X far. So I'm probably going to cut sheath back right about here. Be careful here. It 
don't take much. Okay, that wasn't bad. I don't think I nicked the inner at all. No, nope, we're good. The um, motion cable really doesn't extend. Um, handle doesn't really go as far. My other one went way far. So, that length onto that length. So you don't want this thing to go all the way in when you pull the handle and get messed up. You want it to be sticking out. You know, we got this thing routed. Like, there's slack on there, so God forbid I fuck this up. But, so, it pulls inch and three quarters, right? So you don't want this thing all the way up to the, your, your, your cable sheath, all the way up to there. But you need this thing to pull out. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to mark this. So this will come around the bag like this. I'll put it, so that's probably how that's going to sit, like, you know, and uh, you, you have an inch and three quarters to pull this out. So if this was your sheath, you have an inch and three quarters from here. You don't want that, So, but I don't like to have it right on the edge, because God forbid you fucking shake the tires, you know, falls right out. I like to have it out, like, I'd say a half an inch, but I think that's too much. Uh, yeah, maybe a half an inch out. Um, some more give or take there. So we're going to mark that and pull the handle before cutting it. Now my Sharpie marker is over here. Kind of rubbed off, but you can still see it. It's right there. So it'll pull out just fine. Now you can cut it at that Sharpie mark. All right, I hooked up the air. Gonna give it some power. And um, we'll go hit the button, see if it works. See if I wired everything correctly. Well, it worked. <laughs> Pretty freaking cool. That makes life a lot easier, huh? Let me show you. The in car video. Oh, I have. Oh, sorry, climbing in. The CO2 is just sitting on the floor because I haven't figured out where to mount it yet, <laughs> where I can access it easily. I have. Here's the system up here. There's the handle, the cable, the, the plunger thing. And you can see the, I don't know if you can't see it, there's a Mac valve right here with the air hose and everything. But this is, don't mind the labeling. It, it's uh, mislabeled. I put them in the wrong spot, so I gotta strip the label. But this is, it turns the solenoid on for the parachute. So if it's off, technically it shouldn't fire. Nada. I did this so I don't accidentally driving to the pits, blong, blong, drop the chute and screwed. So on, button. Man, that's so much nicer just, I'll have to get used to just tapping the button because that's what you got to do, just tap it. But man, that thing is, that thing is sweet. Benefit is, uh, I'm out of control. Shit, spin, 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 shoot out. Straighten me out. I'm not fumbling. If you guys remember in car video up here with a hand trying to find it. Now, like I said, you can still use this as a normal lever as well. The tightening nut um i think i'm gonna so there's like a little rod end on the cable oh that wouldn't matter there's a nut that 
hits the handle right there. If you hear that, I think maybe put a a washer under it to space it up that little bit. But man, so freaking cool. And it works. Everything works the first time. <laughs> All right, let's move on to another thing that it's all done. All right, now that we got that chute working and all figured out, that seems to be good to go. The only thing I got to do is mount the CO2 tank. And I need a second regulator because the parachute launcher is like 3 8 tube. It needs the volume and boost control and the release is quarter inch tube. One's 150 PSI, one's 100 PSI and below. So I need, I'm just going to get two regulators, the same one I have, and I'm just going to daisy chain it on this regulator right here. And what I'll do is I will take the gauge that tells me how full the bottle is right here. Take that out, put an adapter, second gauge on it, put this on the end, and, you know, I'll have one of these be like I just threaded in the fitting so I'll probably leave this as the uh parachute release and boost control but my boost control is 4 hand so I want to see if I can figure out how to get an eighth inch tube eighth I'm sorry eighth inch NPT down here to a T with you know dash three on each side or dash three female dash three male or dash four whatever whatever for me to get this all to fucking work is what i'm trying to figure out in my head so i gotta order that and i gotta figure out where to mount this so i can access it while in the seat um i thought about putting it on my cage bar behind my driver's seat but then i gotta rerun my whole parachute tube because it doesn't fucking reach <laughs> all right that'll be left for the next way We'll figure that out another day. It's on the list. Uh, I went ahead and made my two brake lines. See them down there? Right here. I don't like them as much from here. But it is what it is. I got my bleeder. Sorry, my, my big fat fingers in the way. Got my bleeder on there. Full reservoir. All the tires off. And we are ready to bleed some brakes. Now, I won't bore you during this whole process of this. Because it's boring, and you're just going to sit there staring at me, staring at you, while this thing just sucks fluid down. But, God, these strange ones are so small. It's like six mil or some shit. Uh, maybe it's quarter inch. I can't remember. It's been a year. Yeah, quarter inch. Quarter, like, can't make it a ten mil. Stop with this little itty bitty shit. So it's a 10 mil on the rears because there's stock calipers back there. It's annoying that I can't sit this down anywhere because the, the fitting, the air fitting, sits out longer than the tube. So my step my stepdad gave me a swivel. This should be much better. All right, on to brake bleeding. No. Personal preference. I started the farthest caliper away and worked my way in. So it goes right rear, left rear, right front, left front. Seems to work for me. Okay, guys, we're kind of jumping around here. Um, I, I'm all over the map right now. I'm waiting on parts. I'm waiting on this. I'm waiting on that. But finished bleeding the brake lines. Everything's all good. Did that a couple of days ago. Um, no leaks, so good to go in my book. Um, I went ahead and fitted the headlights into the bumper, which, well, call me stupid, but I figured the bumper that fits so well, the headlights would have been easy to fit. No, sir. My God. I probably spent, I want to say, about three hours fitting this. If you get a show neck, show, shoe neck, show neck front bumper, you're going to have a hard time. I promise you. 
There's a lot of cutting to be done. I made templates off a factory bumper, and then I came up here. They're down in my shed, and I, I came up here, and I'm like, whoa, they're way off. I had to trim a lot. I'll show you. Oh, I had to trim. If you can see the black plastic piece, I had to trim that to get it to fit all in the corners. This head, don't mind this headlights. It's it's not adjusted. This I had to trim on this one. Uh, I mean, on both of them, but on this lens, I had to trim. You could see how much I had to cut out to fit the factory. Uh, adjuster bracket um it's not it's not the prettiest thing in the world but they're in there you, it's a lot of trimming it doesn't look terrible they're still not lined up 100 percent. but i'm not going to go through getting them 100 percent perfect when they still all need to come out and the bumper get painted i gotta figure out this one this is bothering the crap out of me we'll worry about that when it gets painted I've been just hammering this thing the past week and a half, hammering it. I wanted to fire it up today, but if anybody was here last year around this time, they remember how many curses I had and how many problems I had to get it started. Well, we're back again to it. Somehow my shifter cable off the shelf is bad. It's binding up somewhere. I have no idea why. <laughs> No idea. So I had to order a new one of those today. And then I get the fuel pump system ready. I add fuel to the thing, hit the key, pump screaming away. I got no fuel pressure. What the hell is going on? So I spent about a half hour, 45 minutes trying to figure it out. Pump's dead. It's not putting out any types of pressure. I've seen a lot of bad reviews on these AM 400s. I've seen, I talked to a bunch of people who got no problems with them. So, go pick up another one in the morning. That one was used. I'm kind of curious if, my buddy says he flushed it. came out of his car. Um, because he took my 4303 and did duels. I'm curious if he just didn't flush it good enough to be happy. You know, flush all the ethanol out of it for for it to be okay with itself. <laughs> okay with itself, yeah. Just annoying because I don't have the best setup in the back. And um, it made it... It made it kind of a nightmare to get out. I had to pull the radiator back out. That's the only downfall to this system that I have in the back. Is that the radiator is so large that it blocks pretty much anything. Oh, uh, that is what it is. At least it's not cooling, it's just water. I mean, there was nothing in it anyway. But guys, get in the garage, put on your AC. Today's not so bad, the humidity is okay, but I've had the AC on the past couple of days. Grab some tools, grab a cold beer, get to work on your hot rods. Have a good night.